Well, if you were sleeping, I hope that song cranked you up and uh, got you going and got us focused while we're here today to praise Jesus and to honor him. And listen to the word say, the word believe will come up a lot of times. Let's begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to the life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Our sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, we live in freedom and newness, to do God's work in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of love, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. Good morning. Reading the Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah, beginning at chapter 50, verse 4. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ears to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me my cheek to those who pull out my beard. I do not hide my face from mocking or spitting because the sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore, have I set my face like flint and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face, e face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They will all wear out like garments, like moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of the servant? Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on their God. This is the word of our Lord. Morning. The epistle lesson is from James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what is great, consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and it sets its, and itself sets on fire by hell. 
All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. When the tongue, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives? Or can a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel. We say together, Alleluia. Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the disciples, when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them, and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder, wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, he asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashing his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has it been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can only come out by prayer. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Oh, yeah, it's good.
what's going on in your life here but are you lost without Jesus right now are you spinning your wheels are you desperate are you desperate for the Lord and that's what that song is saying there are you desperate from the Lord there's a couple of things that I wrote down there I'm lost without you I want your holy presence in my life I want the daily bread well gosh we just had a, a bunch of sermons on daily bread the word of God the daily bread in the Word of God, not to fill our stomachs, but to fill our spirits. Are you desperate for the Lord for a healing right now? Are you desperate for the Lord for a, and a breakthrough prayer right now? Are you desperate in the Lord for a, a healing right now? Are you desperate for the Lord for a marriage to be restored? Are you desperate for the Lord to provide you employment? Do you believe that God can provide that for you? It's desperate. How about that man in the gospel when he met Jesus? Jesus is here, and sometimes we just read through it. I think it needs to be read sometimes with a little bit of excitement. You know, it says that everybody saw Jesus, and they were overwhelmed, and they're, overwhelmed, and they're running to Jesus. They're running to Jesus, and the father screams out, can you heal my son? My son has got this going on. Jesus, can you heal my son? He's crying out. He's out of breath. He's been running to Jesus for that healing. How about you and I? Do we run to Jesus first for that healing? The disciples, did they have it all together? No. They didn't. Because the, the father said, I, I, I brought him to your disciples and they couldn't heal him. Well, the disciples just came on back from a missions trip. Remember, Jesus sends them out two by two. They go. 
They're proclaiming the good news. The Messiah is here. There is healing. They're healing people. And they come on back and they can't heal. Well, they didn't have the song that we just sang. All hail the power of Jesus' name. They must have forgotten that. Because it is the name of Jesus that does the healing. And they must have forgotten or being very repetitious because Jesus says, this type requires prayer. Guys, disciples, do you, do you understand? This requires prayer. And they kind of forgot about that. And maybe it goes back to James chapter 1, where James kind of talks to us as disciples and how our prayers should be. Now, I'm just asking you as I read this here, think about your prayers. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. You're all in. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea. That is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from their Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. In other words, you pray for something. Lord, um, I'm going to stand in faith here. I'm going to ask you to provide, and I'm going to stand in faith. But I'm just going to get in here a little bit, and I'm going to try to do it myself over here. Well, I just asked you, Jesus, to, to do whatever we prayed for, but I'm going to get in here and do it myself. And that's what the disciples did. Kind of did it by themselves, and they forgot it's the name above all names that does the healing. That's what I like about James. I do love James because he kind of calls this out. We continue on in James chapter 1. It says, be doers of the word, not hearers only. So when we pray, we're trusting in what we heard from the word of God. I'm all in. Jesus, your first place. God, your first place. I'm trusting in you. Yes, it might not come right away. But I'm going to stand in the gap and I'm going to pray, Heavenly Father. Because I heard your word, I'm going to be doers of the word. Last week we heard about James chapter 2 and about judging. About judging. If we're to be disciples, why would we be judging? And it said about judging as far as people coming in to your area. So people coming in here. Do we judge the way we look at somebody and say, huh, look at that person. Doesn't have a tie on. Doesn't have a dress on. Where's the Easter bonnet? Get in the back. That's what the word says. You get into judging because that person looks better than the other person. And the, the commandment here is get out of that. That's not for us to do. That's not for us as disciples. And as a disciple, we're learning. We're students of the word of God, led by the Holy Spirit. And if you remember a few years ago, our worship service was going on. If you were here. And we had a homeless person come in, backpack, the shuffled. He walked down the center aisle during the service and sat right there. We all saw him. What was going through your mind? He doesn't belong here. He came and worshipped with us. He came up and received the very holy meal that we're going to receive very shortly. And by the end of the week, he was murdered on this property. That happened here. Judging? Get it out. Get it out of our vocabulary. And we hear today on James chapter 3 about our tongues. Mm. You don't have to answer this here. Anybody have a disagreement with their spouse on the way to church this morning? All right, here's some giggling. So maybe not today. Maybe it was in the past. Maybe it was when you were bringing the kids or bouncing around in the back and you're going and you're trying to silence them down and you, you say something out of frustration. Sit down. Well, there's no ice cream for a year. You just want peace. You just want peace. Sit down or we say something even worse and we crush their spirit. You ever say something to your bride or to your spouse that once you said it, you're, oh, I got to get that back. Once it's out, 
It's too late. We've hurt that person. That's why James says, in our discipleship, as we grow as disciples, cursing and blessing should not be coming out of our mouths. How can we be singing, all hail the power of Jesus' name? How can we be singing very surely, how great thou art, and we leave here as a witness for Christ Jesus and start cursing? Blah! It doesn't line up. In Matthew 5, Jesus says, we're the light of the world. That's who we are. Let your light so shine that they may see your good works. Yes, that's what Jesus said. Your good works that they may glorify your Father in heaven. Yes, works are important. But they're done once we understand that we're saved to serve. So if I leave here and you invite me to your house and there's a bunch of guests there. And you say, well, this is Jim. He's a leader at our church there. And I start blowing off a whole bunch of curse words. Wow. Who wants to be connected to that church? No. Who wants the Jesus or the God that he's preaching about? No. We're called to live by an example and put our faith into action. We're in a Mark chapter 9. We gone over, we went over Mark chapter 8. We had Mark 7 last week, and I, I wish we didn't because it, I think it, it leads perfectly to where we are today and believe. Jesus is doing miracles still in Mark 8. He's healing people. He's feeding 4,000 people. He heals a blind man. And then he comes to something with it comes to our faith. And Jesus, on his way, he asks the people that are around him, who do people say that I am? And of course they answer, well, John the Baptist, Elijah. Others say that you're a prophet. And then Jesus makes it personal. And he makes it personal for you and I. Who do you say that I am? Let that sit on your heart for a minute. Who do you say that Jesus is? Is your thought right away, well, yeah, he's, he's my, as Peter answered, he's the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior. That's how Peter answered, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's how we answer by the power of God's Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus, you are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are my Savior. Yes, you are my Redeemer. Yes, you are my Healer. You are the Great Physician. And as we continue to be fed by the Word of God, we realize all these names that God is for us. So that when we have an issue in, the life, in our life, we're not like this gentleman here who is crying out saying, but if you can do anything, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. We have the Word of God right here. As believers, we're empowered by God's Holy Spirit. And this should never be on our hearts. Or never. Well, Jesus, if you can do anything, can you, can you provide here? Jesus says, if you can? Do you know that I'm God and I'm standing here right before you? We know, we've heard this before, Colossians 1.15, Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. That's who Jesus is. So when you come on in here every single weekend, every single time to worship, we have him right behind us. It is a great visual for all of us because we're visual people. We get to see things. And Jesus' hands are always open for us that we can come to him. He doesn't come in here one time and you look up there and his arms are folded over and say, huh, well, Tom's here today. What do you want, Tom? No, it's never that way. His arms are always open for us. Everything is possible for one who believes. And it goes back to you. Who do you say? Who do you say that Jesus is? And the boy and father exclaims, which is just off the charts, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Wow. Wow. Help me overcome my unbelief. We're being bombarded with things in this world right now that just has us in pain. Crying. Trying to understand what is going on. 
Where is God in any of this here? Is God like sleeping right now? Yesterday was 9-11. 20 years after that disaster, that heartache. Where was God in that? Sonny's got a little video for us to see. When it first happened, the minutes felt like hours. The hours felt like days. And the horror of what happened, one detail after another, could hardly be processed, much less understood. Then days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into years. Memorials were built, wars were fought, victims' names were read, Survivors tried to pick up the pieces, over and over again. But no matter how much time has passed, we vow to hold these memories. We will never forget those who were taken from us. The world changes and shifts this way and that. But one thing stays constant. One thing is steady. God. God weeps with us. God mourns with us. God bottles up our tears and records them in his book. He is closer to you than your own breath and remains the cornerstone of life. God is the solid ground holding us up as the world moves beneath us. It's as true today as it was on that day. Our God reigns. He reigns over principalities and powers. His dominion stretches beyond what our eyes can see. And when the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, our God reigns. We will always remember. A powerful reminder that our God reigns. Even when we go through tragedy, not only 9-11, but again, whatever is going on in your life, Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns. Our God reigns. We go back to uh, the writings from Isaiah. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me and helps us. It is God. He's sovereign over everything. He's in control of everything. And yes, his heart aches when our hearts are aching, like in 9-11, or the loss of a loved one, or whatever is in your heart right now. Our God reigns. Did you hear the, the word of God that a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy? John 10.10. 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus' words. But I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Can we say that together? Thank you, Jesus, on the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Now, there's the people at home right now. They don't think, I don't think they heard us. They're watching online right now. But we're going to say it again. And I hope the people that are watching online, they're going to say it too. Thank you, Jesus, again, with a little bit of an excitement. Excitement. Because our God reigns. Our God reigns. On the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Amen to that. And we do thank you, Jesus, for you reign. And God, you reign over it all. And Lord, when we go through tragedies and we go through heartaches, Lord God, we know that we can come to you. And by the power of your Holy Spirit that dwells in all believers, that you give us comfort, that you give us peace, that you give us strength. You give us the words, Lord God, to say when we're hurting. Bless us, Lord God. Help us to go forth as ambassadors. Yes, that's a word that you use for us. Ambassadors for your son's name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Let's just settle our hearts down. Much to pray about today.
Many people are hurting. Many people need healing. And yes, there are victories. There are victories. So let's open up our hearts and ask the Lord to bless us as we come before him in prayer. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord for faith and its increase, even in the midst of unbelief, that God would sustain us through the many troubles and trials of this world, where unclean spirits often afflict us and those that we love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the teachers of our synod schools, colleges, and seminaries, who will be judged with greater strictness, that the Lord would bless them, preserve them faithful to his word, and keep their speech from stumbling, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our tongues, that our Lord and Father would tame what no human can tame, that he would turn them from cursing the people made in his likeness to instead blessing God, and that he would keep us from stumbling in what we say. Let us pray to the Lord. For our governing authorities, that God would guard their tongues so that they do not stumble in what they say, but speak wisely, leading in accord with his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all in need, for your healing touch, and especially today, Lord God, we lift up Karen Pruden and the family, mourning the loss of Erica, who was called home to glory. We pray for peace and comfort for that family. Prayers of thanksgiving, Lord, prayers of thanksgiving for Duke being with us today. After have to go into the emergency room, doing tests and no complications. And he's here with us today, Lord God. We thank you and praise you for answered prayers. Continue prayers of healing for Pastor Dave. We ask that Jesus, you would just continue to heal, put your healing touch upon him. Bless him and restore his health. Strengthen him. We pray for Arlene also as she cares for her husband. Prayers for George Ann Mannon for successful heart procedure on Tuesday. Prayers for successful cataract surgery for Doug and Chris this Wednesday. Continue prayers of healing for Susan and Doug being treated for cancer. Prayers for Bill Donaldson who's got loss of hearing in one ear and will have tests this week. We pray, Lord, for your healing mercies to be upon Bill. Continue prayers of blessings upon Susan, Shannon, John, Ann, Austin, Oscar, Mary, Justin, Sal, and baby Emiliano. We thank you, Lord, for the opening of Emmanuel School this week for almost 30 students that came to be blessed. We ask you, Lord God, you continue to bless those little minds and hearts, Lord God, and blessings over those teachers that you would give them the patience and love that requires to be a blessing to these little children, Lord God. And prayers for all who are mourning the losses from 9-11. 20 years, Lord God, and it seems like yesterday. Lord, we bless those that are hurting. We ask for your healing, Heavenly Father, upon all those that are reflecting on loss of loved ones. We pray for your healing mercies on those that are suffering, that those were there at the rescue and have received cancer, have gotten cancer, Lord. We pray for your healing there. Your blessings of strength and protection on those that serve us as we sleep. Our police officers, our first responders, our fire department, and our military. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who commune, that we may be strengthened by the body and blood of Christ, who suffered unjustly for our sins and was vindicated in his resurrection and that they may be certain no one can contend against or declare guilty those who have been reconciled to God in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
All right, just a couple announcements. Um, first off, um, I know we've been, we sent out um, notification for Oktoberfest. We're, we're looking for a response back to be, get sooner so we can calculate and do what we need to do for all that. As well as uh, uh, this week, we're going to start our midweek service again. Uh, come join us. Uh, you get the privilege of hearing me and Sonny speak uh, on discipleship and uh, how we can guide that and do the word and increase that in you. Uh, also, if you look in the back of the bulletin, we're starting to help with um, those who like high tech. Um, there is a scanner thing in the back to help you with your uh, donations and uh, your offerings. Um, I think that's it, right? Is yep. Membership class, uh, next week, if you're here, you'd like to be a member of uh, Emmanuel Lutheran, uh, please uh, sign up this week, uh, next Sunday, after the 9 o'clock service. There's a two-hour um, uh, lessons and instructions led by Don. Uh, please sign up and be a part of that there. And um, that is all we have. We, we worship the Lord now with our offering. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To let everybody know that the elements have been consecrated by pastor. Hear the word of the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. You may be seated.
where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day, He will make a Make a way. Oh God, will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. Today, He will make a way. He will make a way. By a roadway in the wilderness, you lead me. Rivers in the desert will I see. Sing it louder Cause nothing happens 
strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare. The body and blood of Christ, lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Before we close, you're all invited for um, coffee right after here, and a good report for our Sunday school is crowded. It's busy. Praise God for that. Hear the benediction from our Lord. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with his favor and grant us his peace. Amen. Sing my soul.
believers in Christ Jesus, we go in peace and serve the Lord.